Leds, uh, for some, it seems to me as if they are a little bit of an afterthought and uh, they are, they're nothing of the sort. They are a vital piece of equipment, not only to be able to cast the distances that we want them to, uh, but to set the hook. Uh, when I first started using a hair rig or when it was starting to be developed, it was called a bolt rig. Uh, and that in itself lends um, a lot of credence to the involvement of the lead. It was the cart bolting against that lead that drove the hook home and all we had to do then was pick up the rod and play the fish in. Um, so leads to me uh, are, are not just a casting tool. They are there to, to as I say, set, set the hook. And uh, over the years, nothing has really changed for me. Um, I want to use, in all honesty, the heaviest lead I possibly can. Um, obviously, there are situations where a lead can become a problem, and I'll, I'll deal with ways of, uh, of getting over those problems um, in a while. But the weight of the leads, I remember going to Rainbow Lake four times uh, in the mid-2000s, um, and we had some massive leads made, uh, 12 ounce like Klingon shaped round leads made uh, for the journey where I could lock up as tight as I could to the hook bait, tight into those snags and uh, and I could get to, uh, I'd be on a bite, you know, it only took one bleep and you knew you were in. Uh, but the lead could be released and, and that is a very, very important aspect of anything we're doing. Uh, leads are very important, but at times they need to be lost uh, at times, we need to work our way around the problems that we come across. Uh, the first problem is probably weed. <clears throat> and uh, a lot of people feel that a lead can be a hindrance. Uh, over the years, I'm still sitting on the wall a bit with this one. Uh, I've caught so many carp uh, with a setup where the lead has stayed on or was meant to stay on uh, and not being ejected uh, once the carp had picked it up. Uh, I, you know, I've, I've played so many carp and it hasn't put so much pressure on the hook hole because the, 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 a lot of the lead is collected, a lot of the weed is collected around the lead. So there's always food for thought, uh, but I always try and be as safe as I possibly can. Now, talking about safety, uh, if we want to use big leads, and I do, as big as possible, a small lead doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, the sound of a two ounce lead in the water in the water is absolutely no difference to a four ounce lead in the water. If the carp are scared of it, then they will react exactly the same to either of them. The difference being once that bait is on the bottom with a four ounce lead, I believe it's got infinitely more chance of hooking a carp than the two ounce lead. And uh, th that is a train of thought that I'll always have. Using a four ounce lead though, uh, can cause problems in itself. And let's talk about the safety first of all. The last thing you want to do is crack off with a four ounce lead, sending that like a missile, probably subsonic, but it's going to be traveling at a rate of knots, uh, flying across the lake. If it hits someone, uh, certainly on the head, uh, you're, he's going to be dead before he hits the floor. So um, it, it, we need to, to, to look after uh, uh, the lead as much as we can. I don't use leaders. Uh, a leader causes another knot in my setup, and I don't want another knot in my setup. If anything happens, I want that lead system to come off the line as easily as it can. Uh, and a knot that's floating around, uh, if, if it gets cracked off, it can catch in something and easily snare that fish before it's get ri got rid of the hook. To that end, uh, I use thicker mainline. I got 20 pound and 23 pound extra set. It's a monofilament, um, but it, and it's designed specifically for distance casting. Uh, it's quite thick at 23 pounds, but I know I haven't put another knot in my setup uh, and I can release the tack on the end uh, of my line quite quickly if it snaps off, uh, which is very rare with this stuff. And it's never happened to me. Um, again, if I do need to get a massive distance, then I'll change the braid. 
And I've got the submerged camo in 40 pound braking strain here. Uh, I can cast a five ounce lead with that and I can cast it absolute miles uh, on the correct rod uh, with no doubt about it snapping off. And uh, it works an absolute treat. Settles on you real nicely. And uh, yeah, not like the older braids where we used to just hope that uh, a wind knot didn't occur and it snaps off. That's very, very safe stuff. So that's how I fish. Uh, with heavy leads um, you know whatever setup I use which you'll go into now uh, it, I don't use a leader my main line will be strong enough I'll change it over if I need to for a heavier lead now for probably well it's a great deal of my fishing 75% of my fishing I fish with a leg clip this is a little slick one, uh, a, a, a camo, an edges camo one, uh, size seven, uh, and that is a three and three quarter ounce Klingon lead. I fish these with a PVA bag, uh, my big mesh PVA bag on the end of it, which acts like a parachute, so I can fish it into the silt. But if it does get into any trouble, obviously the lead can fall off. Um, you know, and, and you're playing, you're not leaving the carp toe and the lead around if your main line was to break. Um, and, and you know, on the slick ones, it'll come off every time. The one problem people have with leg clips and using PVA products is uh, losing the lead on the cast. Um, the whole thing needs to have gone tight before it hits the surface of the water. And it's worth your while if you're not used to doing this and going out and practicing. When you found your spot with your lead, you put it in the clip, probably measured it around your distance sticks. Have a couple of casts again, just to confirm you're on the spot. When you cast that PVA bag at the spot, you've got to cast it. So your intention is it for it to land maybe a couple of meters beyond where it's actually going to and that allows you to stop it when it hits the clip just above the surface of the water then you can feel it all the way down to the bottom it keeps the hook weight uh, and, and, and lead separation all the way down and it lands absolutely perfect on the bottom it is something to practice believe you me because then you can use pva bags so much more effectively and you can use them all the time getting that amount of uh, attraction around your hook bait uh, it, it is priceless but yeah I don't use any leaders again. I've got a long tail rubber on it to avoid any tangles. Uh, it lies perfectly on the ground and the carp safety is assured. Now, there's one rig that seems to have uh, ignited uh, in, in the fashion stakes again. Uh, it can be set up in various ways. But again, it's a rig that I've used for years and years and years. I haven't changed anything because of fashion. It just works. Again, I don't use a leader. This is tied up on 23 pound Exocet. The first thing I do is slide two hookling sinkers up the line. Uh, they will grip the line and also grip the camo bead that's going to stop the hook link flying up the line. Put on a flexi ring swivel with the big bit on the line so it's got maximum uh, chance of clearing any obstacles that attach to the line above it. A helicopter buffer bead edges camo again and a four ounce distance lead. The reason I use this rig uh, it is because of distance to avoid tangles uh, I am the master they could rather call me a tangler than an angler I think and uh, this assures with my stiff link pop up that I can cast it anywhere with no fear of tangles uh, yeah I'll try and avoid it in very very weedy conditions because the lead is going to stay there but on most occasions this is the rig I would go for at distance. Uh, it avoids tangles and sets my stiff link pop up down very nicely. And probably uh, for the more fashion conscious people, your chod rig, uh, you can set your chod rig up on, on this setup and uh, which it always is, and it's very effective. Uh, I do not ever use chod rigs. 
uh, because I don't think they are more effective than the rigs that I use. But in saying that, I did it for a month on a water in Essex uh, just so I could say I don't like them because I had used them. I did catch a couple of fish. I lost a couple of fish, but they were no better than anything else I'd ever used. Uh, I think, in essence, it's the way that that is set up. It lays an awful lot of movement for the fish to move off, and then it bumps into a heavy lead whatever way it's going to go. And, uh, yeah, a very, very effective and tangle-free set up <clears throat> the leads themselves i'm not that bothered really if they're, they're camouflaged or not uh they look a lot better which again when things look good you feel good and you probably end up doing good but it's the weight of the lead that is important the rain cling on leads are brilliant for short distance stalking um stuff where i can just drop it in or i'm not casting very far um, but the, the bigger distance leads help me to get that fraction more distance when, when I'm casting. And uh, I don't think lead setups need to get any more complicated than that. Uh, the, the, the basics, as big as lead as I possibly can and as safely as I can. I don't want to uh, um, not overstate the safety aspects of, of using big leads. And uh, please remember them. But uh, yeah, the bigger the lead, the more bites. This is program number five in the series and to ensure you can see all those that we've made and all those that are going to be produced in the future you need to subscribe and press the bell icon to make sure that you can see what we come up with next.